Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about all of the awesome armor sets that are in Valheim. Iron Gate has done a really good job of making most of the armor pretty useful, even towards the end of the game. But before we go over the individual armors and where they're best suited, let's make sure you understand the basics of heavy and light armor in the first place because they cater to different playstyles and situations. You might think that heavy armor is best when you're exploring a new biome full of danger, but I find that it's actually not good in that situation. When you don't know what's going on, you want to be fast, so you want to use light armor. Where heavy armor really thrives is actually the previous biomes, because it allows you to farm resources, and those enemies you used to have a hard time with, you'll find are just much easier when you bring in the heavy armor from the other biomes. If you like to block and dodge roll and parry enemies, and you like melee, if that's what you enjoy, then the most rewarding things for you are gonna be the heaviest armor. And then we have our light armor. And believe it or not, light armor is actually what I recommend you explore new dangerous biomes in. Even though you would think better armor is better. Not really, because when you don't know what you're dealing with, you need to be able to run away. Light armor thrives for a playstyle where you don't even use blocking, you don't dodge in the traditional way, you just use the character's actual movement and shift to physically avoid the enemy's attacks by not being where the hit is. Light armor gives you an increased mobility compared to heavy armor. But you're also pretty squishy. Now that you understand the basics of light and heavy armor, let's cover the different item sets and the purpose that they each serve. First we have the leather set from Deer. There's actually two leather sets, one from Boar that you start the game in, and one from Deer. The leather set is interesting because it's the most beneficial set to upgrade. Upgrading the set quadruples the amount of armor it provides you. The purpose of the leather set is to introduce you to the crafting system with the workbench, and how to farm enemies, resources, and combine them into armor. The next set is the Bronze Heavy Armor. This is an introduction to Heavy Armor, being the first armor that'll actually slow you down when you wear it. For the most part, the Bronze Armor set is just a teaching item. It's there to show you that you can gather metal, forge it, smelt it, put it together into armor. It's actually quite underwhelming as armor, and you'll often be better off with the Trollhide Armor. Trollhide armor is one of the most useful armors early on in the game. This armor isn't as good as bronze, but it's pretty close, and it doesn't slow you down. So you'll find that troll leather is a great, versatile, go-to armor that's great for almost any task early on in the game. You might think that you need bronze armor to go run around in the swamp, but that's not true at all. In fact, you should explore the swamp in trollhide or even just leather armor, because this way you can run around and then when monsters see you, you'll be able to escape them. Next, we have the iron armor set. Iron armor is the first true heavy armor. For most people, iron armor really is the goat. It's the thing that's gonna make Valheim much more approachable for them. However, if you're playing on higher difficulties, the enemies do more damage, but the armor doesn't give you more protection. So on harder difficulties, iron armor is skippable. Next, it's we have the root armor set, which is one of the most versatile armor sets in the game. This armor set gives you poison resistance, pierce resistance, and it increases your bows by 15. Considering most players use bows as their primary damage output, this makes you much more powerful. It's a really, really great armor set, and I encourage you to get it, especially in the planes. The planes has a lot of pierce damage, so this chest piece alone will help you stay alive. Next, we have the wolf armor. This is somewhat of an optional armor set. Say that you skipped iron armor, you might want to get wolf, so you have a heavy armor set available. In general, the mountains favor mobility. You're going to get killed more often by wolves when you wear slow armor than when you wear high mobility light armor. So 
it's not going to protect you from everything. But it is nice that it gives you frost resistance. You don't really need to worry about those frost meads anymore. Although, how beneficial is that when you can just make a cape that gives it anyway? You know oh, but don't worry, because for everything that the mountain's heavy armor lacks, the mountain's light armor, the Fenris set, really makes up for. This is a very special armor set, because it gives you increased movement speed. When you wear the whole set, you get 9% increase, so that's basically 20% faster than when you're wearing heavy armor. It's very noticeable. It feels snippy. And even though the Fenring armor is from the mountains, I think it's the best armor to use to explore the Mistlands. Because realistically, you're just gonna get ganked when you go to the Mistlands. All these crazy monsters are gonna come out of the mist and just destroy you. So you really need to be able to get away and run around. That's why the Fenris armor is so profoundly useful. It's by Next, we have the Padded armor, which is the only armor set available in the plains. Padded armor is interesting because it's significantly lighter than all the other heavy armors in the game. Because it's so light, you're going to be able to hold more resources. So padded armor really shines for that reason. Given that padded armor is significantly easier to get than the carapace armor in the Mistlands, it's one of the best go-to heavy armors in the game for most players. And before we get to the Mistlands armor, let's cover the two utility armor sets, I'll call them. The first one is available from Hilder's Request. Hilder's Request adds chest pieces and hats that decrease your stamina. For whatever reason, Hilder doesn't sell pants, so she only sells chest pieces and hats. I recommend pairing the two Hilder's items of your choice with the Fenris leggings, just because they increase movement speed by 3%, and if you're wearing Hilder's armor, then you're at home, you're in your base, you're farming, you're building, you may even be on passive mode, so that movement speed is really the only relevant thing to you. The other utility item is the Dverger Circlet. This thing is awesome. Next time you're exploring a swamp crypt, try doing it with one of these headsets. You'll lose some armor, but it makes navigating everything so much easier because playing Valheim in the dark is pretty lame to be honest. Next, we have our two Mislins armor sets. The heavy armor, carapace armor, and the light armor, the mage armor. Both of these armor sets are incredibly powerful. Carapace armor is really good, gives you loads of armor, and makes the whole game a lot easier. It's not that much different than the padded armor when you're in other biomes though, because the padded armor is already so strong in the previous biomes, whereas the carapace armor just has an edge on the padded armor when you're actually in the mistlands getting attacked by those creatures. So now, this, oof, there's a reason I ended the video with this armor set. This thing is God, I swear, it's insanely powerful. Nothing comes even close to the amount of damage you can do with fireballs because they're AOE damage. So when you're fighting groups of goblins, nothing is as powerful as fire magic. It just totally- And that's it for this video, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the different armor sets and where in the game they thrive. As I mentioned, there really is a situation where almost every armor is useful. Granted, you'll only use the strongest heavy armor you have, because there's not really much purpose in using a weaker heavy armor once you have the stronger one. However, for the light armors, they are all useful in their own way, because light armor doesn't replace itself. It just becomes useful in a whole new way, whereas heavy armor just replaces itself. Once you have the iron set, you don't give a crap about bronze. Once you have this, you don't care about your iron set anymore. And once you have carapace armor, none of the heavy armor sets hold any advantage. Anyway, if you want to support my work, then check out my tutorial about setting up your own dedicated Valheim server. This is a great way for you to play Valheim with your friends on some of the new Hilder's difficulty settings, because you can change the world modifier on the server, and then do a whole new Valheim playthrough in a way that you've always wanted, but you didn't have the option to before. Do you want to get rid of portals entirely? Or do you love portals? Do you want to take metal through portals? You can do any of these things with world modifiers thanks to the Hilder's Request update. Because now you can customize it without using mods. And that is really beautiful. 
Anyway, that's it for now. If there's something you'd like me to make a video about, then comment below and let me know. I love to make tutorials in response to the things that you guys say and comment. Thanks for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye!